Hello, welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. My name is Martin Turner, and today we're going to be talking about bullets and outlining. Now, if you use Microsoft Word or an outlining program, you've probably used outlines a lot. You'll certainly have used and seen bullets, which are a very popular form of organizing information. Well, let's go to the screen. Uh, and over here, uh, I have uh, a simple little list. Uh, in fact, let's just restore that to its pristine form. So it's just a list uh, created in Quark Express. Uh, and um, I'm using down here, on the measurements panel, paragraph, and all the outline stuff is down here. And I can set this to uh, default bullet style, which puts the bullets in the margin. I'll explain why in a moment. A default numbering style that does the same thing. But more usually, I would use one of the outline styles. Uh, now, it does take a moment to refresh sometimes. So you just go off the screen and come back. And the reason for that is it doesn't want to be keep refreshing if you keep changing uh, the outline and numbering, that could take a very long time. Uh, bullets uh, and indeed numbers. And if you now click on increase indent, uh, it does the indent. Uh, and the same goes for bullets. Uh, the default ones are quite boring. Uh, and um, you'll see that the different lists are managed separately. So I've, I've introduced this one um, uh, as I've lost my measurements panel there. I did the wrong hotkey. Um, let's have that back. Um, so I've, I've introduced this one as a bullet and it's then continued to number the numbers uh, sequentially. So that's important that you can have different lists and they'll work uh, without interfering with each other. There's also a hotkey uh, for going indent or outdent. So I just command or control on a PC slash to go uh, and then I do Alt Command and that comes back or Alt Control on a PC. Well, uh, that's all very easy uh, and useful. The uh, default outline isn't particularly exciting, uh, but uh, never mind. Now, I mentioned that Microsoft Word is where a lot of people have used this. So let's do a word import now. So as you saw before, we've got our default bullets and numbering. I'm now going to drag in this Word document and it's correctly outlined it. If I go to Word now for a second, you'll see that uh, Quark Express has, has correctly interpreted almost everything. It's just this punctuation, which it's not done, which we can get back quite easily and I'll show you how in a moment. What it's also done is it's created a new outline style for Word's outline style and new numbering styles for words are numbering styles. Well, let's look at that for a second because the way in which Quark works is actually quite different from the way Word works. So Word, essentially, you apply a numbering style to a collection of text and you can stop restart it and restop it and so on. As we saw earlier, we, we can restart. But uh, it's hard to manage lists separately uh, and when you want to start doing your own styles rather than the words default styles, it becomes quite complicated. Well, Quark's got a different approach to this. Let's go over here and we're going to go to uh, edit bullet numbers and outline styles. So it's over here. Uh, and what we've got here is that list we saw uh, and we've got three options on new. So new is bullet style, numbering style, or outline style. An outline style combines different bullet or numbering styles uh, into uh, an outline. And this is where you see that the bullets push themselves into the margin, as you saw it over there, and so do the numbers, because this is now going to indent them the other way. And that means you can have running indents where they indent and stack. You can also have uh, that punctuation if you wanted it. Uh, so let's go there uh, and let's do uh, that one, and we'll have, um, uh, actually that's not how I do the punctuation, that, that includes the lower levels. Uh, and we'll just have a look at that. So I've now created outline style, and I'll now go on here, and go to outline style, uh, and that's changed that. 
Now, if I come back to bullet numbering and outline style, uh, let me look at that again. And this time, I'm going to actually put in the lower level separators. Uh, and I'm going to, well, well, let's do that for now. And now look at that. Uh, like in many legal documents, you now get uh, those 1.1s one uh, coming in. Well, okay, let's have another look and see what else we can do with that. So back to outline style uh, and include trailing zero. It's the final change I can make here uh, and save. And now we see that even when it's the top level, it's putting in that trailing zero. Okay, that's about as far as we can go with outline without looking at the bullets and numbers themselves. So let's do a new bullet. <coughs> bullets are easy, we'll do them first. <coughs> and um, as you can see, I can give it a name. Uh, so uh, quark demo bullet. And I can either have the character style inherit from the paragraph or pick up a style of my own. Let's inherit for the time being. Now you see I have this outset, that's why the stuff was going into the margin because I was outsetting it. And in bullets and numbers and outlines, you can have negative numbers here. That's very important because mostly in Quark, you can't have negative numbers. So I can push it into the margin or I can pull it back out again. And that could either be absolute or relative in M's to the font. I can change the size of the bullet uh, so I can have that much bigger. Uh, let's say I'm going to have it huge. And I can change the alignment of where that's going to line up on. Now, for a bullet, that doesn't make as much difference. It doesn't make some difference. When we start doing numbering, the numbers go off uh, to the left or off to the right, depending on this setting. So let's just do that for a second. And so now we're going to do quark demo bullet. Uh, and as you can see, I've got these huge bullets, which are actually also too high up because of course, by giving it a very large size, uh, I've also increased uh, its position on the line. Well, let's do something else then. Let's go back and we will do quark demo bullet and we're gonna change that. And now I'm gonna make it a character style. I'm gonna take it blue dingbat. Um, and uh, now you see that that size thing has disappeared. That's, that's part of the character style. So let's have a look at that now. And, oh, look at that. So I've now changed the color and because it's a dingbat, I've changed the meaning of that font marker. I just paste in whatever I want and it will do it. Uh, and I can use the glyphs palette to help me out, window uh, glyphs, to find out uh, what I can put in there. So I just type in there, uh, zap, and didn't quite want to do that, but never mind. Let's go back. Right, let's go on and look at numbering styles. So uh, I'm going to do a new numbering style. And this is slightly more complicated. So quark demo numbers. Again, I can inherit from paragraph. We'll leave that for the time being. And I can now choose different formats. So I can have one, two, three, four, Roman numerals, A to Z. Uh, Eastern characters, I can have numbers uh, in circles, if you like those. And even down to typographers, uh, footnote markers, which are maybe not so useful for this. It shares um, this list with the footnote list. Now, I can prefix it. So let's just prefix that with uh, a hash. And we will come back to here and save that and have a look now. So I'm going down here and I'm going to quark demo numbers. And as you can see, it's uh, numbered them with a hash. And I can also put that trailing punctuation in. Uh, so going back to my quark demo numbers, I can put trailing punctuation in, for example, a full stop. And we'll see that. Now, as such, those bullets and numbers on their own are not that exciting. But let's now combine them uh, into an outline style. So go back to the outline style I made. And this time I'm gonna say uh, quark demo numbers, and then quark demo bullet, and then quark demo numbers. And I'm going to include the top bit. That's gonna look a bit funny for the bullets. And now we will go to outline style. Uh, so again, just move off there. And uh, you see that I've now got, and if I, if I now do a little bit of outlining on there, uh, because, uh, and you'll see I've got this, this punctuation coming up. Now, that's all very interesting and very straightforward. Uh, you can work on the uh, 
margin alignment. So let's go back to that. And we're going to go to quark demo numbers. And this time we're going to make those right. So let's have a look at that. And you'll see that they now line up uh, with the right of what there is uh, in the margin. I'm going to just change the, I'm going to go down to here and restart the numbering at uh, say 24 and you'll see what happens there. So if you want that kind of thing, that's very helpful. I can do the same thing uh, with the bullets, of course, but in either, I can also do center alignments. So let's try that. And now they line up in the center. So all well and good, uh, that's very helpful. It imports easily from Word. What else can we do with it? Well, here's one I made earlier. So, um, Let's go to Christmas is coming. So uh, here is using only numbering styles, the uh, uh, Christmas Carol sheet. And, and if, if you're much of a designer, you probably get uh, regular requests around this time of the year uh, from uh, people who say, oh, you're a designer, aren't you? Could you just quickly, I always hate it when people begin, begin could you just quickly, because it never is. Could you just quickly knock us up a Carol sheet? Uh, there are all the usual Carols. Uh, and uh, that'll be great. So you knock them up a carol sheet and they come back and say, actually, could you put another carol in there? Uh, and also, could you reorder them? Because we're gonna sing them in a different order. So I didn't get quite the right thing there. I'm just gonna select all of that, uh, delete that, and they're gonna put that in uh, over here. Uh, and uh, if you're using a numbering uh, system like this, then you can very easily uh, move things around. So, uh, like that. Now, what have I quite done here? So the first thing you gotta do is work out what you're really trying to accomplish. For this, I've created a outline style called song sheet. Uh, and uh, it's composed of big numbers and verse. So I want the number of the carol, but I also want the verses to be numbered. I'm not gonna number verse one, I could do, uh, but it would just look silly. So what I've done is I've used a style sheet. This is entirely style sheetable. And in formats, I've got down here song sheet as part of my first line style sheet. Uh, and for my verse style sheet, let's come down to here, uh, I've got uh, again song sheet so I can apply the same outline numbering uh, to uh, to different style sheets. Very powerful, you can't do that in Word. Let's have a look at what we're doing there. So what I've got is it's a song sheet and I've just got big numbers is the first one and the indent form is verse. So let's just quickly look at that. So this doesn't look indented because actually there's no reason why it should be. I don't have to indent it if I don't want to. And in this case, I didn't want to, but if I now come down to here and increase indent, that becomes the same number as the verse. So there's lots of ways of playing with this. Clearly for this particular application, you wouldn't want to change that in that way. That would be a mistake. But uh, as with so many things Quark, the flexible way in which it's been built up with separate bullet or numbering a separate outline structure, the ability to put it into a into different style sheets means you can do typographically much more. Now I have one caveat before we finish. If your document needs to be internally consistent and number correctly or bullet consistently, then by all means use outlines, bullets and numbering. However, if you're laying out a document which has been uh, numbered uh, and is perhaps a legal document uh, or some such, it may well not be consistent, but you must be consistent to it. So when the document's already been numbered, ask the question, do you want me to number this consistently or do you want me to exactly mirror the numbering in the original? If you want to mirror the numbering in the original, then export the document as text from Word and that will put the numbers in fixed and then import it and don't touch outlining. If you import an outline document from Word, 
Quark Express will think that you want to use the outlining function. It will import those styles. Uh, it will do that work we saw earlier, which is very helpful if you want a consistent document. But if you need to exactly mirror uh, the company's policy or a legal document or an official document, then don't do that export as text and import from there. Well, that wraps it up for outlines. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, I'm Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express 2017. Please do consider the book. Uh, and until next time, I bid you happy corking. Thank <laughs> you.